Last year, over 80 million piglets died because their moms laid on them. Yeah. This growing problem is costing the average corporate hog farm more than $745,000 a year, and it's costing the entire pork industry more than $6.9 billion every year. When pigs were raised organically, around 40% of them would die because they were laid on, just like this guy. Oh, don't show it to us. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. Except, this guy was lucky. <laughs> While working with the University of Iowa and the Student Accelerator, they highly encouraged the business model campus. And we knew what we were doing. It's a business model campus. It's easy, right? I mean, Iowa's a partner. Revenue is sales. We're selling to farmers. Of course, it's not that simple. So we interviewed farmers from all over the world and found that 92% of them were actively searching for a solution to this very problem. We also found our competitor. At the World Park Expo, we found a company that would blow a breeze underneath of a sow, a mom pig, and encourage the piglets to the outer sides of the crate. And it worked. They got a lot of sales. It was effective. However, veterinarians found after the first few months that the breeze was actually increasing disease and was offsetting all savings the farmers were getting by reducing the laid on piglets. So we knew there was a solution that we could solve. We also realized that through all these, this customer discovery, that really the 9,000 largest corporations within the US were hog farmers, were our target market because they covered 87.5% of the US pork industry, which is a $24 billion market. And we have the team to get this done. Our team is experienced in swine management, ag sales and marketing, engineering design, computer programming, international manufacturing, and our CTO is a data and forensics consultant for the Royal Air Force, Pentagon, and NASA. We sat there and we're like, okay, we're gonna have farmers train their sows to not land their piglets to classical conditioning. Right, that's not effective, we figured that one out. We bought a 3D printer to do iterations every single day so we can continually improve this product as fast as possible for as cheap as possible. And realized that through all the different iterations, going from a little pig that's gonna walk around in a crate, get vibrate, squeal, and get shocked the sow to stand up to conditioner, to a ball that would roll around and pretty much do the same thing, it was a really bad idea. And customers really told us that within the first week of interviewing over 100 of them. So veterinarians pushed us towards a more proactive approach. Something we can put in a pen that would analyze the squeals of a piglet, and then detect when one's getting laid on, and then let the mom know to stand up. So, our biggest thing was we have to validate that we can actually differentiate a regular squeal from a piglet getting squished squeal. And we feel it, we realize we can do that. The top represents a normal squeal within an environment, while as the bottom represents a piglet getting crushed. And we know this by the breath squeal, breath squeal that a piglet will make over and over and over until it eventually suffocates and dies. Well, we realized we could differentiate that. We ran some field trials with 3D printed units and we were 87.5% positive on identifying all the laid on piglets and actually helped the farmer save a lot of money while we were there by saving some more piglets. Now the next thing was, we gotta figure out a way to get this out to stand up. How are we gonna do it? Of course, a dog collar. I mean, a shock collar for dogs, they use it to train them. It's already been invented. We don't have to recreate something that already exists. Didn't work. We realized that when we got in there and we 3D printed this massive dog collar, it was pretty cool actually. We got in there and realized that the sow's neck is like a cone and this thing would only slide on up, and it was not gonna be effective. So we had some work to do. So we went to a belt-like design. So we went to a belt-like design that's around the sow's flank, which will initiate a gentle impulse to the flank, which is equivalent to a dog collar, getting her to stand up, and allowing the little piglet to run free. So now, we also realized through trials that 85% of the piglets that died died in the first four to six days. So this belt would only need to be on the sow for the first four to six days of the piglet's lives. So we're working with the ergonomic engineers. We found out that we just needed something that would be safe and comfortable for the sow. Now, farmers can just plug this device into their outlets. They don't need to be battery powered. Farmers don't want to have battery powered outlets. Wrong. We talked to farmers, again, a whole bunch of them, and found that they would have to pay $75,000 to incorporate plugins to the facility to incorporate our mechanism. But we threw an outlet on it, acting as an extension cord so farmers could effectively use our product. But then we became entrepreneurs again. We started thinking, what else can we do here? We can actually adjust the watts 
delivered in this, through this outlet to the heat lamp to adjust the brightness of the bulb, allowing us to manipulate the environment to reduce disease within the facility. This will allow us to more effectively reduce diseases that kill piglets due to being chilled or cold when they're first born. Now farmers then asked us, is there any way you can alert us on our mobile app or on our poor production software when abnormal events are occurring? And we said, yeah, there's an app for that. We can effectively be the Fitbit for pigs. We can tell a farmer when their piglets are getting laid on, if they're getting sick, if they're about to have their babies, or if they're not milking their piglets properly. Now, we talked to farmers about what would you pay for something like this and how would you pay it? They said they would pay around $1,000 a unit and they'd pay about a $50 monthly subscription for the app. We also talked to US Bank and found that they would actually finance this for the farmers since the average purchase size will be around $35,000. One Echo device saves 61 piglets a year and has a return on investment of $3,050 per unit, giving an average farm a return on investment of over $109,000 that first year. We are working with farmers in Iowa and North Carolina, which are the US's leading pork producers, and have letters in tent for facilities beyond the ones we're already testing in. And that will equate to just over a half a million dollars for Swine Tech this year. But that's just the beginning. Our goal is to hit 14% of the market in the next five years, which would be just over $56 million in revenue for Swine Tech. But we, this was not a top to bottom analysis. We built it from the bottom up, but then it just happens to come out to 14%. It's the easiest way to explain. So we did it the right way going from the bottom up. Now, we realize our network is our net worth. So we have company need or worked with some of the best in the industry. Dr. Tom Stein invented the world's number one pork production software program in ever and has asked to be on our board of directors and act as an advisor. He's essentially Dr. Phil for psychology. He is the best in the industry. When it comes to expanding internationally, Marcel Kloral, or Kloral from, or from Sprint, has agreed to mentor us on going international and be there every step of the way, which is a huge asset for us for him to take his time away from his busy day. Then Adam Coppice helped co-found Harris Vaccines, which created the number, which solved the leading epidemic in the swine industry over the last 30 years a disease that was killing millions and millions of piglets over the last five years. So they've been through the ringer and have all the connections that'll help us grow as a company. Now, through all this process, we've really come up with some really key partners, being universities that have run field trials for us, beyond our field trials we've currently ran, and also manufacturers. We met a manufacturer called Fusion Incorporated, who will handle the manufacturing, packaging, and distribution for Swine Tech, as well as cover the tooling. So we don't have to raise money to plastic inject our first thousand molds, which is great when it comes to not spending a whole lot of money. They will also help us when it comes to going to trade shows and sales starting out so that we don't have to hire a sales force right away. They're supplying it to us with the added benefit to them, branching into another sector of agriculture. They currently produce for companies like John Deere and Case IH. So this will allow them to get into the pork industry and they only ask for us to allow them to be their, our supplier for the first three years of our business. So it's a, it's a very good relationship. Now this is just the beginning for Swine Tech. I mean, we have come a long way since May. We are essentially helping farmers feed the world. And we ask you to join us in changing the way we look at the pork industry forever. We just got nominated as a finalist for Ag Tech Company of the Year, where we are competing side by side with John Deere and DuPont Pioneer, some of the leading companies in Ag. We are Swine Tech, we're the next best thing in the pork industry. Thank you. Before I ask you a business question, it's just for my education. I always thought that pigs are smart. How come they kill their babies? They're very Why isn't it happening to cows? Because cows are not smart, but they don't kill their babies. Yes, a cow has one baby, a sow has 14. So when they're, in it, when they're out in the wild or around in a confinement, they've got so many things going on that they just accidentally lay on them. And it's equivalent to us getting laid on by two mammoths or an animal the size of two mammoths. It's a huge size differentiation. And a lot of it has to do with just the fact that they are very smart but very stupid at the same time. They learn very quickly, but they're, 
And it's, 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 a, it's a hard to explain. All right, and then uh, the business question is, um, again, you've thrown in all kinds of businesses in one company here. Because you said you were doing software at some point, then you were describing some of the tools they want to sell, and will you just list what are your products? You're We're selling? selling a physical product that sits on the side of a farrowing crate that monitors the squeals of the piglets, then relays the transmission to a belt on the sow that gets the sow to stand up. We don't have to cut, the tooling is something that they're, another company's doing for us. We're not creating our own tooling, we're purchasing tooling, but they're amortizing it over the length of three years, so we don't have to pay for it up front. And can you clarify, you said there is one competitor that already exists in selling the product, yes. similar to what you're developing, but there is some kind of disease problem, so it's not as good as yours, hopefully yeah. in the future. So which part of that, what you just listed, is a competitor doing? The what? belt or the unit? Or what? All they're doing is a product that blows air whenever the mom stands up mm -hmm. and encourages the piglets to the outer ends of the crate. Now the whole reason, that one of the whole reasons pigs are in these pens when they're born is because the reduction of drafts is highly, uh, it's a really big deal. The more drafts, the more disease. And you can eliminate disease by eliminating drafts. They're creating drafts, therefore creating disease. You said there was, uh, I want to understand your model, there was a, a purchase price for the unit yes. and then $50 for something? $50 a month for the mobile app. So if they do want to incorporate this into their pork production software, okay. it comes out to about $1,200 a year. So Okay, wait, so it's, it's, a hun it's $1,000 a unit. I got yeah. that. And the $50 a month, is that per this unit? This is per facility, not per unit. Per facility. Yeah. Okay, so that's actually... Okay. But you're talking about $5,000 per unit. It's... $1,000 per unit. Yeah, $1,000. Yeah. I have, no, $3,000, I think you said that. That's how, that's its return on investment to the farmer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So one thousand dollar per unit. How many units you can sell? Uh, Thirty-five to the average corporate for a corporate hog farm around two thousand sows, and one corporate hog farm could own a million sows. So I just pick the average size of one facility, which is two thousand. It would be a thirty-five thousand dollars sale. Can you reuse those units? Yes. Uh, eventually, because of the conditions, they're going to break down, and the belts will break down in three to six months, which will be reoccurring revenue for our company. Mm -hmm. So every every recurring is it recurring revenue? Yes. I want to make sure I understand. So every three to six months, the farmer has to buy an entire a belt. belt. So the belt is that the thousand dollar part? No, the belt won't be a thousand dollars. We're currently asking farmers what the belt should be priced, or what we're looking into what the belt should be priced at individually. Okay. Um, we don't know that yet. We have to do a little more customer discovery to figure that one out. Okay. What is your cost for belt? Cost for belt is around two hundred sixty-five dollars. Cost for the whole product is two hundred sixty-five dollars. Cost for belt is right around seventy right now, but uh, we're getting that down once we do a much bigger order. A lot of this is because we are doing prototyping, <coughs> stitching. Actually, my grandma was actually helping and stitching everything up, so <laughs> get in within the family here. How did you come up with this idea? It's unique. I, I worked on a farm. Well, I worked around farming as a kid, but then when I got to college, I wanted to be a doctor. So I realized that farming was the only place I could really uh, deal with medicine with animals and kind of get an experience of diagnosing diseases and, and uh, working with them and was a promoted to assistant farm manager after increasing the farm's revenue by a lot and then saw this problem as the one I couldn't solve and just kind of attacked it at Iowa. You have a lot of advisors, which is great, but really briefly, um, is it your company? Were some of those folks partners? Definitely my company. It's just yes. yours, you own 100% yes. of the equity? I, I own 60-some uh, percent of it. My partner Abraham over there owns oh. the rest of it. Okay, got it. So it's two of you that are doing yes. it. And are you fundraising? Uh, well, not yet. What we're doing is trying to go through field trials uh, to get more data so that when we do go to fundraise, we'll have a much stronger case and have a little bit more power behind our, our back here and we can raise a little bit more money. When you started, you said you talked to farmers all over the world. Yes. I mean, it's a big state. How many really countries did you... Uh... Every pink one. So we got to China, Japan, uh, we had Argentina, So Brazil. you cover really a lot. Of yeah. We, and we, no we... one has a solution like you. Oh, no, nobody. So talk about um, how you're going to block out competition from coming in either patent, patent. or it's, it's pat okay so yes. have you already filed and yes we filed pieces provisional patents uh, okay. utility and we are working with a, a whole collaboration of uh, ip attorneys right now okay to really make it really secure and specifically on which parts uh, the of recognition of the squeals okay and the, the transmission of it to the sow and kind of the reading of all the sow's vitals and stuff like that okay if it's successful you get funded and you get commercial for potential buyer? Uh, potential buyer, Big Dutchman out of Europe. European companies for the pork industry are the more advanced uh, technologically. So they're a big company when it comes to farrowing or where the piglets are born. 
Uh, other potential companies would be a company called NEDAP, they're out of Missouri. And there's many beyond those, but those are the two biggest. Can you get grants for this? Yes, we're actually working on a proof of commercial relevance grant. We were accepted to the point we're presenting to the capital here in the next month. And we're working on a USDA grant as well. We were going to do NSF, but uh, uh, time, time approach and how much time we have is not How much money has gone into the company so far? Uh, right now, the company's had about 27000 go into it so far. We've done things relatively Relatively but low you're not paying yourself a salary? No, we're not paying ourselves. We are paying our CTO about $800 a month just so he can living expenses. We, he said, so at first the whole thing was okay, maybe we don't pay him, but we don't want the guy looking for other work outside of what we're doing here. So if we can help him get by, then we can keep him focused. So if you've only spent 27000 so far, how are you funding all of the legal intellectual property patent work that's being done? So we went through an accelerator, uh -huh. and in the accelerator was a patent attorney, multiple patent attorneys, and they've been really good about just helping us along. Okay. So they helped us write the first part, but then they went in and they revamped everything and wrote the rest of it. Uh -huh. So we've just been working really close. But you it sounds wonderful, but at some point you'll have to pay. Oh yeah, we, we know that. And that's why we, we have until October to finalize all of our patent work. And that's why we're raising money this summer after we do our rest of our Yeah, you're filing the provisional applications now, right? Provisional applications. Yeah, we've already filed the provisional. Yeah, and then it was through national and international, but then yes. it costs you a lot of money. Exactly. But you have so unique products, so my advice to you is just file as many geographical regions you can. Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to get them all. We're especially Europe, I mean, China, it's Brazil. But it's very expensive. Yeah. It's very expensive. So that's what a lot of the money from the fundraising is going to go towards. Yeah. That and supplies. What, what do you think your number one risk is at this stage? My number one risk is whether or not we can create a belt. We already have the initial belt design, but one that is going to be more durable or durable enough. Uh -huh. uh, at, the, at this point, that's the, we, we have something good going on, but we're uh -huh. working with uh, ergonomic engineers and some other engineers that we just hired. They're going to go in there and really make it better. But uh, that would be the, the number one risk. What is the commercial risk? The commercial, commercial risk. risk. A commercial risk would be if we put this in a facility and something bad happened. We've done behavioral trials and everything has come out to be great, but if we throw this into a massive pork producing company like Smithfield, which owns 14% of the industry, which that'd be a 56 billion or a million dollar sale, something goes wrong and they say, can I ask a very stupid question? I'm sorry. I mean, when you do clinical trial on animals and then you do clinical trial on humans and then you bring products through the FDA to the market, that's one story. But is any special regulations for animals? No. Oh, there are special regulations. There are a lot of them, especially with animal welfare. And we talked to the meat packing plants as well as to the veterinarians that handle welfare. And we go through all the appropriate stages with behavioral testing to make sure that this is safe. But you have to get all this approvals, right? No, because no. there is nothing that, right now there is no law against what or anything approval for what we're doing, which is great for us. And that's what's really helped us moving forward. We're Did kind of in between the two. We have to prove to the farmers it works, but we don't have to prove to anybody else. Do you have any data on the, the differences, like it's a sustainable farming they say, free range, whatever, versus this? mass productions, well, do you have data on, on their like, piglet deaths? Yes, so, uh, the, so this is at a corporate farm. They lose about 1,300 piglets a year, which 77% of all the deaths, which equals about 10% of the deaths on the farm. So a lot of numbers, but 10%. Organically raised pigs, they lose about 40%. So, 40. When, yeah, so once they throw these into a, into a facility, the, the, the farrowing crate is what solved this problem originally, but over the last couple decades, advances in genetics has allowed it to resurface because the sow has twice as many piglets as what they used to. More piglets, less room. How need you for can improve this number? Just to get it close to zero? Or? The goal is to get this as close to zero as possible. That is, in both organic and non-organic? Uh, or, or organic, it's, it's not. It's a very, very small market. Time's up. Can yeah. I give you one minute? <laughs> Thank you.